part ng Central Zone ay posibleng makaapekto pa rin yung uh, sakop na hangin or kaulapan nito. Kaya asahan pa rin natin na makakaranas pa rin sila ng mga pagulan hanggang mamayang gabi at bukas. Oh, per Francis, uh, matapos kay Bagyong Marse, may iba pa bang weather disturbances na minomonitor sa ngayon ang pag-asa? Yes, sa ngayon nga po rin itong uh, cloud cluster na binabantayan ng pag-asa sa labas ng Philippine Area of Responsibility ay nag-upgrade na sa low pressure area at inaasahan din natin uh, according din sa track na binabantayan ng pag-asa na ngayong gabi rin or uh, bukas ng madaling araw ay papasok ito sa Philippine Area of Responsibility and oras na makapasok na ito sa PAR ay kikilos raw ito papalapit dito sa may eastern part ng southern Luzon at hmm. maaring makaapekto at magdala ng mga mahihinang pagulan dito naman yan sa may areas ng Bicol Region, Quezon Province at dito rin sa may ilang bahagi ng summer provinces pagsapit ng linggo hanggang Monday next week, Pauline. Ayan, so magiging maulan pa rin pala uh, sa mm -hmm. paparating na linggo. Uh, but for now, maraming salamat para sa update na yan. That was mobile journalist Francis Orsho. A local government units affected by Typhoon Marse have suspended today's classes. There are no classes today in the provinces of Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, and La Union. Students will also stay home today in the towns of Anda, Dagupan City, Lingayen, Mangaldan, as well as in San Carlos City, San Fabian, and San Jacinto in Pangasinan. The local governments of Cagayan, Benguet, and Banguid Abra have also announced class suspensions for today. Let's now take a quick look at today's other headlines. In the Philippine Star, several customs and anti-drug agents were allegedly liquidated by the Davao Mafia of former President Rodrigo Duterte. This was according to a Jimmy Guban, a former customs intelligence agent now serving time for drug smuggling. And in business world, the economy expanded, although weaker than expected in the third quarter. Gross domestic product grew by an annual 5.2% in the July to September period, slowing from the revised 6.4% growth in the second quarter. Some Filipino Americans express concerns about U.S. President-elect Donald Trump's immigration policies. From Washington, D.C., Jovi Francisco with that report. Well, I want to thank you all very much. This is great. These are our friends. We have thousands of friends on this incredible movement. A triumphant Donald Trump greeted his supporters in West Palm Beach, Florida, shortly after emerging victorious in the 2024 presidential elections. It was a far cry from the mood in their camp after the 2020 elections when violence broke out in the U.S. Capitol after he urged supporters to march and protest Joe Biden's win. As the real estate mogul ascends to the White House a second time, his supporters want him to focus on immigration right away. Well, of course, the border. Got to close the border. Get, stop these people from crossing. This worries some of the Filipinos here in America. As you know, there's very high uh, so-called TNT population of mga Filipinos in America. Yeah. They will be very at risk, and if uh, President-elect Trump will take a very uh, inhumane uh, approach to dealing with uh, undocumented uh, Filipinos in America. Yeah, he changes his mind all the time. So we just have to, to go with it because the four years we had with him was also rough. Uh -huh. It's going to be a rough ride, mm -hmm. very dark and gloomy. But again, we just have to work together yeah. for the sake of democracy. Some Filipino Americans who are supporters of Vice President Kamala Harris admit they were shocked by the results of the election and are still processing what went wrong. A bit sad, mm -hmm. a bit shocking, a bit gloomy mm -hmm. that our candidate uh, Kamala Harris didn't win. Mm -hmm. But I just have to just say maybe it's not her time. Uh -huh. Uh, but I hope that someday mm -hmm. that a woman will be able to become president. She had only, what, less than 100 days to, to launch her it. campaign yeah. to get the American people to know her as, and, her, and her priorities. And she lost to the uh, INI, you know, the inflation and illegal immigration yeah. priorities of the majority of uh, 
the voters dito sa America. I'm optimistic that uh, reasonable advisors to President-elect uh, Trump will uh, have good influence on him to live up to his commitment to his uh, audiences, uh, that he will be a unifier, he will heal the divisions. Meanwhile, Comelec Commissioners Marlon Casquejo, Socorro Inding, Amy Ferolino, and Nelson Celis are also here in America to observe the conduct of their presidential elections. They took note of best practices that they think can be replicated in the Philippines, such as early voting and mail-in voting. Ito kasi may early voting, and you can choose mail voting. Yeah. Dun sa local sa atin is a one-day election. Yeah. So on the day of the election, dadagsak sa lahat. Dapat sundin lahat. lahat. Yeah. Oo. Kaya dito, napansin namin, kukunti na lang kasi sabi nila, the other, yung mga iba, they, they avail the, the mail voting and early voting. This coming May 2025 elections, Comelec is implementing online voting for the first time for overseas voters. So while in D.C., the commissioners also took time to explain to our kababayans this new mode of voting. They are excited. Uh -huh. so, they internet voting because they explain that uh, they don't have to go to outside their house and they don't need to be absent yeah. in their work. Yeah, they can do it in the morning. Before matulog or pagising, pwede mag-internet uh, sila and then they will vote. So very convenient on their part. Aside from the U.S., Filipino voters in the UAE, Czech Republic, Canada, and Qatar can now also vote online. Filam voters are hopeful that this will eventually pave the way for better and easier voting channels for Filipinos everywhere. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Jovi Francisco. We are One News. And those are the top stories of the hour. Join us later at 9 a.m. as we continue to monitor the day's biggest stories. I'm Pauline Verzosa. We are One News.